Good morning. Hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Had a good time. Everybody got all the good presents they wanted. After we was on a live stream with uh, Big Bear the other night with on Two Family Homestead's live stream, we was talking about trapping beaver. They said that they have ground up the beaver meat. We've cooked it before, slow roasted it, <clears throat> had like barbecue beaver, but I've never ground it up. That got me curious. So now we're going out to what we've always called the beaver pond. We've always let the beaver just kind of go what, do what they want, but if they start to get overpopulated and really start damming it up real big, and flooding out the timber, we'll go break the dams down, take a few beavers out, because I don't want them killing all my hardwood timber or whatever down in here, so. Me and Lane are gonna go try to catch us one or two. But this right here is one, one way to get free food, make money. I know in our county you can. Uh, and if the prices are right, you can sell the sell the hides and make make out pretty decent. You know, in our county here in Arkansas, we get fifteen dollar bounty on the beaver tail. The hides will bring anywhere. Right now, they're not bringing very much. They're only bringing five to eight dollars, but sometimes they brought fifteen to twenty. And between all that and the beaver meat. One animal that is uh, profitable and good to trap. So we're gonna take you along, show you how we do it, and see if we can catch some free food by tonight. Yeah, it's been a year since we've been down in here. That's some old sun, but I mean that's a that's a tree they dropped. Yeah, that's uh, them chewing the top off, limbs off. That is not from us. This here's what we call the beaver pond. Where I'm walking right now has been knee deep in water. Be walking along and then all of a sudden step off into one of those beaver runs. Yeah, that gets deep quick. Right up in there is where we're going. I won't ever forget when I was a kid, I come down here with my shotgun and that over by that big tree, I was walking along. It was a beaver dam levee all the way across there there was ice out here a few open spots i slipped and tripped right into the side of the ice down through the off the side of the beaver dam i went down into the freezing cold water a long walk back home long cold walk all right you see how deep i am right there <laughs> I always try to use a stick. And you want to make sure it's a fill out in front of you. See how deep that just went? All right, there's what we call a beaver run. That is their main way. And it's not very wide, it's coming back up right there. Show them pan over here, Lane. What they're doing, they're going up into this bank up underneath it. They've tunneled under there. Over here on top, they've got sticks because some of it's caved in. This is a den of their house. So what I'll do is I'll come in here with this. Just find you a stick and try to find where their run goes in. All right, another way to see if beavers are using the area. You see this right here? What we call a caster mound that's not mounded up yet it's a little early i think in the season but beavers have a scent gland and they it's uh put out a scent caster scent and then they'll mound leaves and mud up that just marks their area so we do know that they're using this area number one thing is trying to find out which entrance they're using the most
All right, this here is a 330 conibear. This is mainly all I use for beaver trapping. <clears throat> we set it underneath the water and the beaver will swim into it. It's got a trigger. Let me get it out there. Right here, when they touch it, slaps down, dispatches the beaver. I'm gonna show you real quick how to set it. One piece of advice, do not get your hand in this. Break it. Right now the springs are loaded and I've got the latches locking them close or locking them loaded. Get the trigger back in the middle here. You squeeze it. Right there. Set your latch. Come on. I guess I'm out of practice. It's been a year, a year since I've trapped any, but anyway, right there. Now all I have to do, I'm gonna hold the part. And of course, like I said, the latches are still locked right here. Well, what it does is the beaver comes in there, hits that, and then Now, if I slip and fall in here, you got to promise there's no laughing. You kind of feel your way around. I do use rebar just in case, but stick sling. Yeah. Sticks like this are awesome for help holding your trap up. Make sure you get it through the loops on the latches. And we'll show you that right here. Here's the hole. I always put a stick in here. I usually put the rebar over here. Sometimes I may put a stick here. Another one, you know, outside this to kind of funnel them. Make sure they're going through here. Ooh. All I'm doing there is just kind of helping funnel them, guide them down here to where I know the trap is. I got it over just a little bit too far. Put it right here. They're smart though. Oh yeah, they're smart. You've had them before, take a stick in front of them. Yep. Yeah trigger the trap all right what I'm doing now now that I've got the trap in there I'm reaching down there to the locks that's on the side of the springs and taking them off so be very cautious from now on that trap is fully loaded right there's another caster mound they've piled it up there just marking their territory I want you to look how big that beaver dam is. It's over his waist right there. And uh, another good thing to look for, two sticks. Here's one, look at that one right over there. Look at these under the water here. All right guys, we're about out of time on our memory card. I'm gonna put this last one in one thing I did want to show you is if you're trapping in a main channel not like this but in a main channel and a beaver run this right here is what we call a dive stick you can just put this and lock it in with some sticks above your trap and that will always cause the beaver to dive and he'll go to the bottom and hit your trap so dive sticks they do work all right guys so obviously I'm not Ben he had to go to work we spent last night hanging out with Roots and Refuge, the Holler Homestead, 180 degrees from average, and we didn't get over here and check this trap. So, actually, is there two traps? Two traps. So, we're over here. It's the next day. 
Lane is gonna go check the traps. I'm not gonna take the camera down in there because it's really wet and pretty deep in some spots. I don't want a chance dropping the camera, but I will film it if he comes up with something. I will show you when he comes out of the woods, so stay with us. Well, here comes the trapping boy. It looks like he's empty-handed, but we'll have to see when he gets up here. Well? Uh, one of them was triggered, but he forgot to take the safety locks off of it yesterday, so it didn't catch nothing. Oh, man. All right, so we just realized we probably won't get this video up tonight anyway, because tonight when Ben gets home, we'll film our free 90 free videos, so you'll be seeing that on Friday morning. We probably won't actually put this one up till Friday night, so we'll probably bring y'all back along and check these again and we're hoping to get one uh in the next well hopefully tonight or in the morning because we are going back over to roots and refuge on friday night and we were wanting to barbecue a beaver and take it for everyone to try because that is literally one of emily's favorite meats which a lot of people probably wouldn't even try beaver but so good Emily's over here saying it's so good. So anyway, I don't know if we'll catch one in time, but that's our plan if we do. So we'll bring you back along as we probably come check these tonight or maybe in the morning. So we'll be back with you later. How you feeling? Cold. Cold? Yeah, it's like 34 degrees. Feel like we're gonna have a beaver? I hope. We actually remembered to take the trigger guards off last night. So. That sounds maybe. good. Don't know what that means, but. I'll go with you as far as the fence. Okay. So while we're waiting on Lane to come back, I thought I'd kind of tell you what's been going on with me lately. So I got sick probably, I don't know, almost two weeks ago now. I just got just a common cold. Was getting better, was almost better, and then it came back with a vengeance and I got a pretty roaring sinus infection, which is, this is only my second sinus infection I've ever had and it hurts, my teeth even hurt. So, went to the doctor a few days ago after Christmas and anyway, they said, yes, you do have a sinus infection. I hardly ever go to the doctor. Like, I don't even have a doctor because I don't hardly ever go. I've been blessed up to this point. I don't have to take any, like, daily medications. So, I don't go to the doctor. I don't go to the pharmacy or anything like that, which I'm super thankful for. But, I was pretty sick, so I didn't care. There comes a point I'm all natural, and then there comes a point, like, when I wake up in the night with my whole face and ears and teeth hurting and everything, I think, this is ridiculous. It's time to do something. And I had tried all the herbs and oils and everything up to that point. So, that's where things stood. So, they said, yeah, you've got one. You need some meds. So, they sent my meds to the pharmacy, went and picked them up, and I took them immediately because I was in some pain. Took them in, and right away I told Ben, I said, I feel, it was, it was some cold medicine to kind of dry me up. I told Ben, I said, I feel kind of drowsy. I, they actually told me it might kind of hype me up, and I was just immediately like, he said my eyes were kind of half open. But I thought, well, I guess that's what this cold medicine does. So, and it said take it every six hours, and, and they told me to take it a few times, especially at the beginning, because I was, I was pretty congested and not feeling great. So, six hours later, I took some more. It was bedtime. Took some more went to bed and I slept like a rock. I've not been sleeping because I wake up just like, I feel like an elephant sitting on my face. So I like passed out, slept. Woke up the next morning and my head was, I had a splitting headache. And we had went somewhere. We actually went over to Roots and Refuge house after I took the first dose. I'm not contagious at this point. No one in my family has caught it or anything. The cold is long gone. This is just a sinus infection I have from being sick for too long. So we went ahead and went over there. And while we were gone over there, the pharmacy had called me twice and left a message on our home phone. Well, when we got back home, this little voice, you should always listen to your intuition, to God speaking to you, because this little voice said, hmm should you take this medicine again until you find out why they're calling but I thought well this one medicine they only charged me a dollar for and I thought I bet they've screwed something up and I owe them some more money or something they were closed by that point I'll call them in the morning so I went ahead and took it and that's when I went to bed and like literally almost passed out called the next morning I had the splitting headache and they didn't even ask my name 
when I told them that I had a couple messages, they knew my name. They immediately said, have you taken your medicine? And I said, yeah, I've taken it twice. Well, come to find out, they'd given me the wrong medicine. They'd given me heart medication instead of my, my cold medication. They'd got them mixed up. That slows your heart rate and lowers your blood pressure. Well, I have really low blood pressure anyway. I always have. It runs low. I could be fat as a hog and I still have low blood pressure. It's just, just how I am. So, that, that really, it really shook me up. And I felt bad for at least at least 24 hours after the last dose i was just in a fog um emily was worried she wanted me to go the, back to the doctor but i thought i don't want to go get something else you know more medicines or catch something at the doctor so i just kind of rested and wrote it out but so that's what's been going on with me pretty eye-opening that i could have literally went to bed and not woke up makes you kind of look at life differently and appreciate every day but i'm back to normal now and i searched around on the medicine bottle i thought you know is there any way i could have known that this was not the right stuff and in really small print on the side of a medicine bottle it does tell you what the pill should look like and it didn't look like that it wasn't the right color or numbers or anything so believe me i don't hardly ever take medicine but i will be looking to make sure it's the right thing and i just thought i'd share this with y'all because make sure your medicine is what it says it is because that could have been really bad so anyway i just wanted to share that with y'all i'm back to normal now but i felt pretty rough for a while so anyway lane's hollering maybe he's got something he's smarter than we are the beaver yeah he went through it stick in front of his mouth like i was talking about Whoa. carrying a stick yep put it through the trap and set the trap off that's hilarious he's outsmarting you how does that feel yeah, it's part of me. I didn't set the trap. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. We didn't catch a beaver. We're heading to Roots and Refuge, Jess and Jeremiah's house later. And we wanted to catch a beaver and barbecue it and take it for some of them that haven't tried beaver. The haulers and 180 degrees from average are still there. And, um, but we didn't catch one. That's trapping. So we're going to keep trapping. We'll show you um, in the next few weeks if we get anything. Uh, we trap for things other than beaver too so we'll kind of take y'all along and show you that some clips here and there on different videos but we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up because we are going to film tonight of we're having a birthday party we're actually going to it that's why we're going to Roots and Refuge for Ben Holler and Jeremiah so we're gonna take you along kind of show you it from our perspective and um, we'll take you along and just kind of you can just kind of be the fly on the wall at the birthday party so to speak so um, anyway thanks for hanging out with us thanks for y'all have made our year awesome let me just say we just started youtubing this year and we went to the baker creek spring planting festival and i remember driving up there and emily saying i wonder if somebody will recognize us and we had like 12 subscribers at that time i said emily honey those are our family and they're back at home so no they're not but so that tells you how far we've come our goal was to get to a thousand this year which seemed really unreachable and with y'all's help we're almost to two thousand we we've got four days we might could make it so if y'all share and um send people our way i think we can make it i think we need like 80 something more to make it to two thousand and to me that's just it's just awesome how god works he takes what your dreams are and he does so much more um and I know to some people 2,000 is small, to, but to us, it's crazy huge. And it's been fun. And we plan to keep going and trying to put out five videos a week. Um, just because honestly, this YouTube thing is, it's kind of addicting. The community, the fellowship, the friends we've made. Um, we didn't know about any of that going into this. But that has been the bonus, unexpected blessing on top of everything. So thanks to y'all, because y'all have made it happen. And we will see you on the next video. God bless.